I was talking to a friend recently about my one of my coping mechanisms when I am struggling with being single and I'm like, oh, I really, and you know, I get in my feelings about it. I, I do several things to kind of get myself out of that. But one of the things that I focus on is the data, right? We know that data says that partnered men do have longer lives. They get promoted more. They have better professional careers, right? Like there are a lot of benefits for men being partnered. And we also know from data that the happiest demographic of, of women is unpartnered single women, right? Because they're not bearing the brunt of the of a, of a heterosexual partnership. And so whenever I'm sad about uh, being single, I am always have to remember myself that like, or when I'm like, oh, I got to pursue, I got to chase, I got I to gotta like put myself out there. I was like, am I really trying to put myself out there and craving and aching to make a man's life better? Is that what I'm doing? Because if anyone should be the pursuers, it should be the people who know that they're gonna benefit from it more, right? So like, why aren't men like knocking down on people's doors when they know that they're a good partner, all these other things, right? Men get to be out here gallivanting. And it just seems like when I'm trying to put myself out there, what I'm actually, trying to pursue is like labor. Like pursuing a relationship sometimes feels like the pursuit of labor with the way that things get broken down in heterosexual relationships. And so it gives me almost the permission to rest. I was talking to- It is amazing that she consider a relationship a labor, like it's a physical labor and she's a big woman too. So she, wild already in a relationship right now and that just has to partner is in probably one or two places that if if that person that man might be in already in a relationship right now and that just has to run its course and he better be nice to her because i i if i get a man i need a man who historically is nice and good to his girlfriends to his exes i don't want no maniacs or that motherfucker is at home too, like me. So why am I going out on the streets trying to pursue people? My man ain't out there. He ain't out there. That man is at home. Man is on business. And I like that for us. Like, I know what kind of lover girl I'll be. Like, I want to make my man a sandwich, right? So, but why am I out here in the streets trying to make random men sandwiches? I don't want to make a random man a sandwich. I want to make my man a sandwich. So I just got to wait for my man to show up. Or my person, you know? Because, hey. So I just... Cause I don't want to make a motherfucker a random, random sandwiches for it. No, my man gonna get the best sandwich though. And so that's true. My future that this imaginary love of my life that's supposed to like show up when I'm least expecting it or whatever. I don't think it's worth subjecting myself to what dating and like modern dating has become. Like it is not worth the ghosting, the lack of communication. It's definitely not worth it worth getting unsolicited dick pics by men um, consistently. It's not worth getting asked if I do anal in the first conversation after I say hello. It's not worth going back and forth um, with men who tell me, oh, it'd be so nice if you were here cuddling with me, but don't want to ask me on a date. It's not worth none of that shit. I'm sorry. Like it's not worth the constant amount of harm that I put myself into for the idea that like, I'm going to find this great love and it's going to be worth it. A wor man worth a damn is not going to think this shit is worth it. Like an imaginary man, an imaginary relationship that's going to be so good and so loving is not worth the real harm that we open ourselves up to by trying to engage with men. I think that I am worth being safe um, and being taken care of and not even taken care of in the way that we talk about like men being providers. I mean that we all engage in some sort of social contract with each other in public spaces as a society and men do not feel like they need to uphold that. If you wouldn't go up to a person and whip your dick out in public, how dare you do that on my phone? And I know I've been really dismayed with dating and I've talked about like really not wanting to give it more of a try, but like I am a hopeless romantic who loves to read nothing but romance. So like there is a part of me that's always like, maybe, well, maybe like just give it a try or like try to handle it better. And I have 
different ways of trying to navigate data. Like, I give up. It shouldn't be that difficult. I don't have to put that much labor into fucking any other area of my life. Not my friends, not my family, not, like, work, not casual shit, not being, like, a internet personality person. Like, none of that shit. But I have to do that with men? I, I Absolutely not. But one of the things that flipped the switch for me was I remember when I left my ex, my, uh, my abusive ex, I remember sitting there being like, oh my God, like, he's probably gonna be like this in front of our children. And then I was like, why the fuck am I putting imaginary children that don't exist above me who actually does exist and i feel like i was doing that with relationship thinking about this imaginary man like it, and it's not even worth having sex with these men like i'm sure that i would probably go the rest of my life without having sex again because what is the point the orgasm gap is too high for us to be talking about to try and fuck men who time and time again demonstrate that they don't like women like at best they're unkind at worst it's abusive behavior and I'm supposed to keep dating, subjecting myself to all of this, opening myself up to this constantly over and over and over again so that the grand prize is a love that's the opposite of everything it took to get there. I think that. Um, so I'm looking in my comment section and I see KT and Mystique. I don't know what's going on in there, but I don't like the activity of y'all talking about big women. Like in a positive way over here. <laughs> y'all here talking about she's attractive. I don't know what y'all got going on, man. Y'all got this. Mm -mm. She look good over here, but not too man. She's No, man. Unacceptable, guys. Unacceptable. 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 That big Shirley does not deserve that, my guys. She, I don't know what y'all got going on. I want y'all to get a scale and guess her weight. And I'm telling you, she's bigger than life. But... <sighs> When I never feel bad for when big women complain about dating, it's like a broke man complaining about um, trying to find a relationship. You're not equipped for a relationship. I will always say that. Like a broke man saying that he deserves a, a woman or to be a leader and stuff, you're not equipped. You're broke. You're homeless. You're not equipped to be in a relationship with a woman. A big woman, you're not equipped to be in a relationship with a man. You're not equipped. She don't. She she sits here and she's talking about some. I don't want to put in no labor into the relationship. I don't put in labor like I put in labor to everything else in life, but not into a relationship. I don't think you put in labor at all to be three hundred some pounds or two hundred close two hundred some pounds. Like I know she's probably. I want to say she's she big. I seen her video. She big big. Like you didn't put no labor into your appearance. You didn't put no labor into finding a man. Like you. Here's a weird thing about big women. Big women be on dating apps and all to do is sell a sexual image, like literally to the extreme. Because then no man is out here pursuing big women when he got money or got anything going on. Guys are not out here chasing them. They chase them just for the smash. Every man know this is what y'all do. Complain about relationship more than the average woman should. Y'all complain about guys sending you pictures, guys doing this, guy because nobody wants y'all. Nobody wants y'all. If, if, if big women was such a commodity, you know how it's funny? Um, I think the Sports Illustrator magazine, it put a big woman up there. Why? It put all type of women up there, but when they pick a, a big woman, it was a controversy. Why? Because nobody wanted to see her. Nobody, not only because it was a sports magazine, but they was like, why is there a big woman there? There's a show called 600 Pounds. We don't care about it. We don't put no image into it. We be like, oh, you know, it's the funny little clip stuff, but nobody cares about it. Nobody want to celebrate big women. Just like nobody want to celebrate a broke man. There's no celebration for them. The big or the broke. We don't care for them. Like It's sad, but that's true. Both individuals don't want to work on themselves. He could go out there and hustle and get his money right. You can go out there and lose that fat ass. Lose some goddamn meat off your bone. Sweat a little bit. And now we're talking about no sexual thing. I'm talking about go out there in the gym and sweat. Drop 100 pounds. Like, come on now. It requires work. You're not trying to put in no damn work. Guys don't take you seriously. They'd be like, since you are so desperate for a man, we're going to give you below, below bare minimum and just offer you nothing but like sex. That's it. That's all you're good for. And if you feel like you need something above that, work on yourself so you don't get that same type of energy from guys. But as long as your back has got seven different rows, those guys are like, it's an easy smash. Because they know when you walk outside, everybody's looking at you, not for positive reasons. Everybody trying to figure out how did you get that big? All that weight you carry, how is that a good thing? If people are looking at you, there's multiple reasons why people can look at you. But big people, the number one reason we look at big people is automatically because they're big. That's the most oddest thing. When we look at individuals, we look at 
anything clothes appearance and stuff like that when there's a big person the first thing we're looking at them is like that's not the size of a human being that's the first thing that rests in our head that's not a human being right there that's not how you're supposed to look every other individual walk out there and we question a lot of things you know why he got on there or why she why he walking like this like we have them type of question with a big person we question why you are big that's the only thing that comes why that person so big why are you so big? And we even say it out loud sometimes. You big as hell. Why are you this big? Because even to this generation of time, five years ago, y'all was still big. Ten years ago, y'all was still big. Fifty years from now, y'all still be big. And we will still be shocked seeing big people. When a big person walks through a room, every human being is shocked. Just like, damn. Like, we know it's unnatural. And you will never make us accept it. Because every single year, after we see a dozen of y'all, we still are shocked to see a fat person. Like it's the first time we've seen one. First thing that registered, damn, well, you, you, you big as hell. Like, I know I've seen big people, but I'm still shocked to see a big person. When that thing is never registered in our body or our mind, it's telling you that that's not natural. Seeing a broke person, we don't think nothing of it. That's a broke person. We don't think nothing of it. When we see a short individual, a short human being, that's not really normal sometimes. We'll be like, that, that person's very short. We address things that just don't look right. There's people that should be like, okay, I mean, you, you can be taller, but we'll be like, damn, you short as hell. You know, we, we address it because you kind of look off. A big person, you look off. You're big. It don't look natural. When a person is extremely skinny, extremely skinny, it don't look natural. So I understand you have a hard time dating this big one, but it's like, you don't look... It's, no man want to sit there, walk around, and we try to wonder why is he carrying that overweight sandbag, man? Like, why he got that that big old sandbag with him and stuff? Like, we always wonder how did he lay in bed with that 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 bear? Like, oh, I'm gonna fold you up like a pretzel. That's unacceptable. That's unacceptable. I don't want to hear that. And here's a funny thing: they be talking about videos and stuff about these fat people, and they be breaking beds. I don't see the humor in that. I don't see the humor. Like, you so big that you're destroying beds out here? That's no humor. It costs to make them beds. Like, I, I, me personally, I don't see it. But I, when they be talking about something, we get unsolated. Yeah, because them guys don't think you care about yourself. And clearly you don't because if you cared about yourself, you will maintain yourself and take care of that weight. But you don't care. It's like a broke man. If he's getting women that just don't respect him and stuff, and okay, you don't care about yourself. Elevate yourself and you'll get more respect from women and from people in general. Become a man of value. If a big woman will work on stuff, it's just the same thing as a broke man. I, I don't think neither one of y'all deserve that type of conversation where we say, well, no, work on yourself. If that's the challenge. Work on yourself. It's easy to be big. It's easy to be broke. It's hard to be fit. It's hard to be successful. But it's easy to be a bum. And it's easy to be a fat person. But it's hard to change that stuff. And that's what y'all don't want to do. So I'm not a fan of it, guys. I'm not a fan of it. No. I'm not going to do that. You know what? 